Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. Freedomsphoenix.com Let me first say, uh, my name is Jacob, and I am so honored to be here, uh, to be around so many like-minded people. It's just incredible. So there's a group called Cop Watch out there. They started in 1990, and they were trying to defend homeless people against police. And so they went out there with video cameras, and they started documenting what was happening. And it quickly had traction, and actually police were less inclined to do things that were illegal or bad when there was a video camera there. And a year later was Rodney King, so of course that spread across the country, the idea that we could all watch the police. More cop watch groups started establishing themselves around the country. I myself joined in 2000, and I kind of felt it would be a good idea to make a Know Your Rights video. I hadn't seen one to date. And you know, this was pre-tech revolution. We didn't have YouTube, we didn't have streaming, we didn't have all these things, right? I did have a video camera because I was shooting videos. So I got in the streets and I started documenting, uh, you know, your rights and how they were abused and how they could work. And I came up with something called These Streets Are Watching. And I released it in 2004. You can find it online. But again, in Oakland, California, on January 1st in 2009, a young man was uh, fatally shot on a train in front of hundreds of passengers. And many people were actually had their cameras out and were videotaping. And they weren't cop watchers, they were ordinary people. And I think that really, was a really important moment for me as a cop watcher who was always trying to spread the gospel, get organized, be safe, you know, get partners, go do this proactively. All of a sudden you have these people thinking for themselves about their right to do it. Cop Lock is a group that started in that kind of era where a lot of people are starting to, to, to come and act on their own authority and, and to do things under whatever banner. But uh, to speak specifically about Cop Lock, it's organization it got started in early 2010. Uh, my buddy Damo Freeman, some of y'all may know, started it. He had, uh, like many of us here, had experienced some subpar uh, protection afforded by the local uh, so-claimed authorities. And you know, he worked through the internal mechanisms, as some of us are told to do, to to, to seek a remedy or to find a remedy. But uh, obviously, people who claim a monopoly on force, people who claim the right to steal your money to then protect you don't really have the right incentives to bring about that protection and justice and accountability. So what, it, what Adamo did was start a, a blog called Cop Lock, it started on a Tumblr site, and myself and a number of other folks joined him there shortly after, and it turned into a group blog. We started commenting on situations we saw elsewhere, and we started doing call floods to support people, and that was really something I think that set Cop Lock apart. It was using the tools and the technology that Jacob spoke of, the cameras, and the, the interconnect, more interconnected networks to, to allow people who maybe don't even know anyone in their area to put out their story, to document it and disseminate it. Cop Block then grew to what it is today, which is more of a decentralized Intel hub. So there's now groups across the world, and that really shows uh, the universality of this idea we're talking about, that badges don't grant extra right, that someone doesn't have authority just because it's claimed. And I think we saw that you know, really represented. I know John went over Antonio's situation. And how amazing is it that Antonio, on New Year's, uh, documents something that he sees as wrong, and then while he's being abused, there's actually somebody else across the street videotaping. I mean, that's what's so magical about it. And, you know, it's stuff like that that makes me and, and Pete realize that, that, and all of us, I guess, since we're all sitting here, that we're in a moment, a very, very interesting moment in time, uh, Pete and I have actually decided that we would best allocate our time this year going on a tour and linking up with these different peaceful streets and cop block and cop watch and all groups. And we're going to be doing that. We're going to be doing a lot of cop watching, but we're also going to be doing a lot of skill sharing. We, our goal is to create on the ground connections. You know, uh, look at Pete and I, are, we have, I guess, different banners, but we're here doing the same thing. And, and likewise with peaceful streets, we're all nonviolently you know, documenting police. We're trying to make a situation better. We're trying to get people out of handcuffs. And if you know your rights, then you are becoming awake. And the less scared we are of, of the police, and the more we take care of ourselves, I think the more we can have conversations uh, about how do we live in a world without police? How do we take care of ourselves? Because I know me personally, there's nothing a cop can do that I can't do for myself. And there's nothing that a cop can do that I wouldn't rather rely on on real compassionate people. We know the solution to these issues that we a lot of us see and recognize uh, aren't going to be solved from the top down through continuing to look to a claimed authority. We have to come from the bottom up and see what emerges spontaneously. If you guys are about this stuff, 
there were so many resources, just, just plug in wherever you are. And, and if you see something, like put it on CopLock is a great site. It's humongous at this point. Your, your information will get out there. Um, do what you do and do it well. But if you're gonna really do it well, line up with other people. And then once you line up with other people and start doing it, start working with other groups that are doing the same damn thing.